Lens in the voice coil, it reacts to the magnet uh, force and needs back and forth. That's a good thing. But the bad thing about iron is that it's also electrically conductive. And you might remember from when you were kids in uh, physics class, and you have the red and white uh, magnet, and then you have the coil, and then you put the magnet into the coil, and the needle began to move because you're trying, you're now beginning to induce the magnet field around the magnet into the coil, into the electrical. Conduct conductivity, right? So, the exact same thing happens when the coil goes back and forth. So, when we put a current into the coil, it will have magnetic fields around the coil. And if you place those magnetic fields around something that's electrically conductive, like iron, that energy will be stolen by the iron, and the iron will actually create an opposing force to that movement that tries to restrict the movement of the driver. The iron tries to keep it where it is. That's called eddy currents. Um, and this creates a lot of distortion. And all speakers have this. It's not uncommon to have two to 5% current distortion in a speaker before it starts playing, just because of this phenomenon, because it's used using iron instead. So what we do, to avoid that phenomenon, I can pass this round. There are two parts. <laughs> Is that we replace the iron parts with something we call SMC, soft magnetic composite. It's a pulverized iron powder, but each single grain of this powder is coated individually with a ceramic coating. So when we press it, press it into a form like a pole piece or a ring or something like that, none of the iron is touching each other but it's sitting so close to each other that it's still magnetic. So all the problems with electric conductivity, we can remove. The, this material that we use is 10,000 times less electrically conductive than iron. So we, pres we preserve all the good things about iron and remove all the bad things, and that reduces distortion drastically. So in a driver like this one, if I were to measure that one kilohertz, and measure the third harmonic distortion on this one. If the difference between an iron driver and an SMC driver is 18 decibels third harmonic distortion at one kilohertz. And that's not something that, you know, that looks good on paper. That's something you can hear. And that's what gives these speakers this ease of, you know, sense of ease that it just, the music escapes from the speakers. They don't hold back. And it also makes it easier for us to integrate the drivers to each other. Um, and it also makes it easier for the amplifier to start and stop the speakers. So I'm going to play you some uh, funk music with a lot of you know snare hits and all that stuff, and uh, you can get a sense of the uh, the liveliness of the of the speaker system. And see if it makes sense what I'm telling you. Um, okay, just one second.
not sharp, it's not edgy, it's smooth at the same time. And you know, it's um, one thing is to state that we can measure as you can, you know, I want to prove it to you that the theory is right. So we talked about the uh, physics class when you were kids, and let's, uh, let's, measure. let's uh, imagine ourselves back in the classroom, third grade. Okay, this is a copper tube, somewhat similar to a copper coil. Um, in this instance, the tube stays still and the metal uh, moves. So, copper is not magnetic. I'll prove that with a simple piece of metal. Drop that through, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so copper is not magnetic, so why should it have negative inference on the, on the magnet? Because nothing happens when I move the magnet to the copper. It's not ma magnetically conducted, but it's electrically conducted. And that's where the problem is, that I, when I begin to introduce movement to the magnet, we begin to introduce eddy currents into the copper tube that introduces a opposing force to the movement, like so. This is a very small magnet. We like to use powerful magnets, so let's up the ante on the magnet system and see what happens. It's moving, just very, very slowly. So. The bigger the magnet, the bigger the problems if you use an iron driver or if you use something that's electrically conducted near the voice coil. That's why we use SMC. Because I could take this a piece of SMC, put this through, it would fall through just like this uh, metal piece. That's why we get this freedom of the sound. Um, so, we also use, oh. <laughs> SMC is uh, unique to Dali. We have a patent to use this in speakers and headphones. But we also learned from the core that if you... The driver is not the only place where you have magnetic fields around the coil. There's also crossovers in the speaker. And the crossovers create magnetic fields. And typically a crossover component like this one, if the inductance value is big enough, you put an iron core into the inductor. We found out that if you replace the iron core with SMC instead, we could lower the current distortion in the coil by four times before the signal even reaches the drivers. So we can have the best drivers in the world, but if the signal is distorted coming in, and current distortion, the drivers can't tell if that comes from the amplifier or the coils or the cables, wherever it can come from. And it doesn't really make sense that you have 0.000001% harmonic distortion from the app if your drivers are distorting 2, 3, 4% before it even begins to play. So it's not saying that, that distortion is the Achilles heel of, of speaker design. It's not the only thing you should care about. There's also timing in the drivers, there's dispersion, there's all those things. But if you have low distortion and low loss to begin with, all the other things becomes much more easy to deal with. Hope that makes sense. So, I'm going to play you some live music uh, with a German artist called Nils Pfarr. And uh, this guy is actually, he's originally a, um, a pianist, a classical pianist. And he experiments a lot with building his own instruments and, and stuff like that. But uh, sometime he lived in Copenhagen and got good friends with a guy called Trendemüller. And oh, uh, oh. <laughs> he slept on his couch for a, for a year or so. And uh, Trendemüller taught him how to do electronic music. So I'm going to play you some of his electronic stuff, but from a live concert. Um, if you like this and you have a home theater as well, this one is just <coughs> in stereo, played from Tidal. But this one you can actually get in Dolby Atmos on Apple Movies, um, which is really, really good. I'm going to turn it up a bit.